Guys, listen up. My heart is heavy right now, and I'm going to go unhinged for a few minutes. Nobody's asking the question, what is the church's response to what happened in Parkland, Florida? If they are, their answers suck. And here's why I say that. First off, my heart is heavy because I grew up not far from Parkland. Grew up in the same county. I had friends of mine that graduated from Stoneman Douglas. I had a teacher of mine in high school that was in the school when the shooting happened. My question is, what is the church's answer to what happened? And I will say that it's not just thoughts and prayers. Now, listen, I'm not going to knock that at all. Prayer moves the heart of God. But in the end of the day, I also believe that prayer leads to an Isaiah 6 moment where he hears the Lord say, who will go for us? Who will we send? And I believe there's a response that will dynamically change the way America can go moving forward. Now, now follow this with me. Is Jesus the, really the hope of the nations? And is Jesus really the answer to every problem the world is facing? And can Jesus really change the heart of a person or the hearts of people? If, if those questions ring true and yet we still have this issue, then what's the problem? And I think this is the problem. We, the church, have built ourselves in a way where our impact is mostly felt when people come into our buildings. Now note, I didn't say into our churches because the Greek word for church is ekklesia, which means called out ones. It doesn't mean church buildings. But we have this idea, if they come to hear our music, or they come and hear our sermons, or if they come and sit in our comfy seats and, and, and absorb our comfy air condition, then their hearts will change. But here's the problem with that model is, number one, it's completely outdated. You don't believe me, just look at the cathedrals in Europe that have been abandoned. But then number two, that ideology is completely unbiblical. Take a look with me for a second. At the last seven years, the shootings that we've had in America, Parkland, Florida, committed by a 19-year-old. Sutherland Springs, Texas, committed by a 26-year-old. Pulse Nightclub, committed by a 29-year-old. Charleston, North Carolina, committed by a 21-year-old. San Bernardino, California, committed by a 28-year-old. Aurora, Colorado, committed by a 25-year-old. Sandy Hook Elementary, committed by a 20-year-old. The only exception is the Las Vegas shooting, but other than that, the one common thread that I can find other than the weapons used, they were all millennials. And here's the stats on millennials in the church. Number one, millennials are the most unchurched generation America has ever seen. Number two, 70% of high school church going kids when they go to college, well, they will never attend a church again. And number three, millennials are the generation that are more unlikely to respond to an invitation to come to a church. Yet, this is how we make our impact. Come to our service, come to our program. If you build it, they will come. And, and listen, programs are great, services are awesome, but. We cannot expect to change a generation that's not going to come into our churches and into our, I should say, our buildings. What is going on? What are you doing? So what do we have to do? I believe the impact of the church was never meant to be felt when people come into our buildings, but the impact of the church was meant to be when we, the carriers of Jesus, the carriers of his presence, the carriers of the Holy Spirit living in us, go out into the world. John and Peter, they were walking in the book of Acts, and they're just probably going out to Taco Bell or something. There's a dude out there who's like begging for money. And Peter and John looked at this guy and said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have we give unto you. What do they have? They had the Holy Spirit living in them. They had an encounter with God living in them. And they reached out their hand and they said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That same Holy Spirit, the same Jesus is living inside of us. Ephesians chapter four says this, and he, this is Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Here's the problem. We've had what we call the fivefold ministry doing all the ministry, and the fivefold are not doing what they're called to do, which is equipping the saints to do the work of ministry. Now, listen, I know if you're in fivefold ministry, I am as well. We are called to be faithful to what God's called us to. But a lot of times, what we tend to do is we also build our kingdoms and we build our castles. We invite people to the castle, say, come, instead of equipping the people and sending them out. And here's why that is powerful, because I can't go into any high school and just proclaim Jesus and pray for the sick. But do you know who can? It's the kid in your youth group. 
I can't go into the banking industry and just lay hands on a sick person and proclaim Jesus for them and just pray for whatever their needs are. But do you know who can? The banker in your church who loves Jesus with all his heart. These people are going out and meeting people every day who don't know Jesus, whose hearts are troubled, who are going through so many different things, yet we expect the fivefold who are stuck in the churches to do the work of ministry. And that is completely backwards, and yet it is also completely unbiblical. If you are part of the fivefold ministry, I want to encourage you equip your people. Just do it! Equip them to be a walking encounter, equip them to share their faith, equip them to lay hands on the sick, equip them to see God do miracles with their lives. Don't just let them be pew sitters, equip them to do the work. It is your biblical mandate. What are you waiting for? Do it! You're not in what we call the fivefold ministry, but you don't know how to lay hands on the sick, you don't know how to prophesy, or you don't know how to even pray for people or share Jesus with others. I want you, this may be a bold step for you, I want you to go to your pastors, go to your leaders, and ask them to equip you. As a matter of fact, ask them to equip the whole church because you need to know how to do this. If we want to make the impact that we were called to make, our response has to be, we need to equip every believer. We need to equip the body of Christ to do the work of ministry. I hope this encourages you. I hope this stirs something in your heart. If this encourages you, share it. Let me know. Comment. Go out and see God do amazing things with your life. Love you guys.